So my mate Vic from Down Under Woodworks uh, recently sent me a link I found very humorous about the Craig AccuCut. Now, I am a Craig brand affiliate, and so, you know, my opinion is biased to some degree, way, shape, or form. However, the bloke was talking about the 10 worst tools he ever bought and how that this was number one. And the reason he gave it number one as the worst tool he ever bought were because of these tracks. So see there how they're not square? They're slightly trapezoid. And he blamed that for a three mil one eighth accuracy. He reckons on a cut, he could only get it down to one eighth of accuracy. All right, well, you just saw me. I just did a full sheet of 19 mil, so that's a true three quarter inch plywood. That was very heavy going on the saw, quite tough. That is the full length of the AccuCut XL. And I'm gonna show you something. I measured that out to be 160 mil, which is what I got set on here. There's the start of my cut. Now you'd expect the start of the cut to be pretty good. Get some focus in. Um, yeah, that's bees dick perfect. Here's the end of the cut, 2.4 meters over six feet later. And um, yeah, that's, um, that's, that's under a mil. And uh, look, I can really, honestly, and I'm not exaggerating here, I cannot see a dick of difference. That is absolutely the same. Let's try in the middle here. We can get some flex in the middle. This wasn't clamped down. There are no clamps uh, on this when you use them on plywood, especially with the full length. The friction does the job. Let's check the middle. And uh, yeah, there you go. Would you look at that? Can I see anything? I can't. So it's technique, people, it's technique. Like any tool, it's got its limits, and this is a cheap tool compared to a track saw. It's not as cheap as just getting a really reliable straight edge, such as that one, and setting it up, and you can use that. It's great, you know, I did that for a very long time. However, I wanted to upgrade, and so this is what I did. All right, I'll show you the trick. If you grab your track saw, and you raise the guard. Okay, that is now sitting on there. Let's put it right on the edge. Honestly, there is almost no slop in there. There is a little bit. I can twist that. You can just see that moving. Look here. That is maybe a mil, mil and a half. So what's that? One sixteenth of an inch, which I think for a tool designed to break down large boards is perfectly acceptable to begin with. However, it doesn't have the tightening grub screws that your professional Makita first tool track saws have that would get rid of that slop entirely. So what I like to do is I eliminate that by giving it a consistent 1 16th of an inch, one and a half, two mil, whatever you want to call it, twist. My grip on here, I'm pushing the back of the saw out this way and the front of the saw this way. So to over exaggerate, I'm doing that with the saw. That way, I'm constantly riding along two fixed points on the track, and it barely moves, but it does make a little bit of a difference. So if you twist, so you can even accentuate it more by grabbing the front handle and pulling here and pushing back with handle, but it's a really gentle movement. It's really comfortable. You can do it with one hand, and that cuts absolutely perfectly. Because you're going to register it to the front edge here, it doesn't matter that you're on that tiny little bit of angles, it's minute, you're going to cut to the blue line, and that's the blue line, every time. So don't blame your tools, blame your technique, do a little bit of research, and you'll be able to find out how to get more accuracy out of your AccuCut, even though it is a cheaper option. I still love this thing. The other thing you're going to lose getting an AccuCut over a plunge saw is the plunge. You obviously have to set the depth of that, but again, it can be done. If you look here, I've just cut two full sheet cuts and I can't even see a mark on the underside of this workbench. Yesterday, when I didn't have the track and I was just doing some cutting, you can see that's what you typically expect. And look, it doesn't matter, it's a workbench after all. It's not even my workbench. But with a little bit of depth control and practice, there you go, that's what I've got. Peels off. 
pretty much, you can't get much closer than that. So no, you can't plunge, but yes, you can be accurate with your depth with a little bit of a care setting up the track saw. And how I set my depth is you get the track, you put it on the edge of what you want it to cut, pull up the guard, drop the track saw down, release your height adjustment, and then gently position it until it just touches, hold it firm, relock the height adjustment, and you're gonna have the exact correct depth for there. If you wanna go halfway down, on plywood that's relatively easy, because you can see halfway down, you can come here and set to say that line, lock it down, and now you're gonna run a dado halfway through that thickness. So not as quick as a plunge saw, but again, not too bad. Okie dokie, just so we know it wasn't a fluke, here is another example a touch later in the day. Uh, again, I've just measured out using another cool little Craig tool, the Craig Multimark. I set that to 25 mils or close enough. Marked out the start and end of my cut. Again, it's a full sheet this time of 12 mil, and I was cutting really thin, 25 millers. Let's get the calipers out and measure both ends and see how accurate we are using my twisty technique. All right, so there's one end and we're at 24.75, 24 and three quarters of a mil. Twist it over. And that one is 24.6866. So it is to one tenth of a millimeter. One millimeter is one sixteenth of an inch, so it's one tenth of one sixteenth of an inch accurate. I don't think you can really ask much more from a tool than that taking in user error. Yes, I'm practiced at using it, but I'm practiced at using it. Don't discard it, it's a great bloody tool. Hang on, I've got another piece here just for funsies. Now this was a separate measurement, so the measurement's going to be slightly different based on my marks. 25.11. Flip it over. There we go, that one's only 24.6, so that is half a millimetre. So that is not as good, nowhere near as good as the last cut but it's still only half of 1 1/32 1/32nd of an inch for the american friends out there or half a millimeter for everybody else that's that's still fairly acceptable even when I was being crap So that's my little rant on why you shouldn't trust everything you see on the internet, particularly if it's quite clickbaity. You can read the irony to that statement watching this YouTube video if you wish. I really do enjoy this tool. I don't have a table saw. I'm currently on site in someone else's workshop, so I couldn't have brought the table saw anyway. And this is a fantastic addition. Yes, you can just use a really long straight edge piece of wood. It will do almost exactly the same job and cost you two parts of nothing. If you want to though, you can get one of these. If you really want, you can cough up seven, eight hundred dollars and get yourself a proper track saw with all the plunge and bells and whistles and things. And I might one day, but for now, Craig AccuCut is doing me perfectly fine and I find does an accurate job of what it's supposed to do. If you got any questions, hit me up in the comments and if you want to see a full review and setup of this tool, click the link above where I go into it coming out of the box and how you get it from its pieces to how you saw it used today. Catch you soon.